Let's go, guys. We have another game here. This time we have Corvinus in the color yellow playing as the Japanese against his opponent playing as the Holy Roman Empire in the color pink. It's Louis Empty. Welcome, everybody, to another Age of Empires forecast game. Hope you're having a really good time. Last night I had a really uh, unusual night. I was very sleepy at 10 p.m. Very, very sleepy. Um, it doesn't happen usually. Normally, I don't have problems with sleep, but I never sleep that early. But man, it felt good. It felt good. Like some days I have been sleeping quite late, like 2 a.m. or something. And that's not very good. That's not very good. So I'm, I'm glad I, I fall asleep at 10 something. And then wake up at 4 and I couldn't sleep, so I was reading some books. I found a really nice one about uh, Marco Aurelius. Marco Aurelio? Uh, I don't know, that's the Spanish name. Uh, it's uh, it's called... I forgot the name. It, it, it was about his philosophy of life and it was very, very interesting. So I was just reading that and then just fall asleep again and then wake up at 9 a.m. Uh, man, that felt good. I like. I, I feel like I sleep like a baby. Usually, I, you don't see this kind of, um, not this kind of nights. Usually, uh, I feel. I don't know why, but I feel like a lot of my friends have problems sleeping lately. I don't know if it's the age. I don't. I, I really don't know what is it. Or maybe it's just the weekend warriors. You know, uh, if you just work at a company, and then. You just want to spend all your time awake when you're not in the company so you can compensate the hours that you're not there to do something you want. Uh, but I feel like a lot of my friends have uh, this kind of problem lately, which they didn't have before. I, I don't know what it is. Or maybe it's just a phone. Maybe it's just a lot of memes. Look at that great bombard. Beautiful. This is a guy who loves great bombards. But anyway, let's get back into the game. We have... Japanese going out for the early berries. He got the Tawara, so he will be gathering those berries in a, at a faster rate. Meanwhile, Louis edging up with the Archon Chapel. Let's take a look at the spot. Gets the gold, gets the, a little bit of the wood, a small wood line, and gets gets the berries. So it's a beautiful spot for the Archon Chapel. Still have some place for the farms, so he's good to go. Can I compliment how chat Louis is? Louis doesn't have alt accounts. So it's very easy to find. It's only one one account, level 1100 something. Uh, match history, open. Always available. It's just so nice. <laughs> it's just so nice. You know, so for some people, you know, I understand they want to hide their match history. They don't want to share the strategies or anything. Especially for those more focused on the professional side of things where they just want to practice and they just don't want to show off that much. I completely understand. And Louis is the kind of guy like... It doesn't matter, man. Just keep it simple. Just play. Leave it like it is. Default settings. Let's go, man. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. We have two civilizations that... They love to go castle. They love to go fast castle. Although we have seen the Holy Roman Empire being with some changes. It's They, they are fighting in feudal now. Just because they have marching drills, they can catch a lot of tempo. Like... Especially in this map where you have very little distance between you and your opponent, marching drills is actually can you can have a lot of advantage. You're sending units right there. You may arrive at the right time to cause some kind of damage. So we have seen Holy Roman Empire playing the Field Age for a long time. And a lot of people have been wondering like why is Holy Roman Empire so unidimensional? Like why do I always have to go castle? Uh, why uh, fast castle and that's it that's the only way to play it and you know now you have it marching drills for free people are playing with uh with archers even uh, and you know talking about archers <laughs> we're gonna see archery range here so there you go devs listening to the to the community uh, I, I bet they are a little bit slow in communication. Not very slow, like, not communication at all. But, you know, usually things in game development, they do take time. So it looks like we're gonna... We're gonna see some action in the Field Age. Barracks and archery range coming 
up for Louis. Meanwhile, on Abugacious, coming up from Corvinus, which is a very good thing for Louis because on Abugacious are really weak against range, uh, range weapons. They don't have any kind of armor. Actually, they don't have any kind of armor for anything. And they are fast, but guess what? These guys are also fast. So, meanwhile, uh, I mean, other wishes are faster, but it's not like other archers where you can just run away and you, you, you never catch them. You have more chance to actually do some damage. And there you go, archers intercepting some units here. More units coming for Louis. Like we're gonna have some spearmen as well, just in case Corvinus decides to go for some horsemen. It's like unobligations pretty much everywhere here in the left attacking the gold the gold vein. Meanwhile, more unobligations gathering here. It's like Corvinus will continue the production of unobligations. Let's take a look at if he has another barracks. There, there you go, a couple of barracks already there for Corvinus, so he's gonna keep spamming those just to send them across the map. Meanwhile, more archers coming up for Louis. Now he didn't go mine work, so he's gonna have to wait for those upgrades from the blacksmith to get those plus one range attack, which is huge at this point. It is huge. Talking about upgrades, we're gonna see Samurai coming soon, which is exactly what Corvinus needs against those archers. Having a Samurai on the field just means that he will tank all the damage. And there's not much these archers can do about it. Well, another Onabugeisha here just raiding. Let's take a look at the other side of the map. Archers just around Corvinus Corner. Action happening everywhere here. Forgot to change the, uh, the income uh, for check out the villagers. So I'm gonna put that there for a moment. Then we're gonna go back to income per minute. Looks like the archers will get spotted here. Now Louis is actually going for some gold. Has five on gold. Look at the spearman tanking. It's like I don't have a man at arms, but I, I a spearman. I choose to use like a Pokemon battle, <laughs> and it's like okay, uh, that was all he can do. But actually, he, he got a nice catch here. Looks like he will get the first villager of the game. Now for Louis. Very nice catch, and Pokemon is not moving the villagers now. There, you, there you go. He just moved them. And now he will have to run with those archers. But the Onobugeishas obviously are faster, so he cannot outrun them forever. And we have seen uh, the game I cast with Voldemort, where he just mass archers uh, against the English. He cannot catch them. But the Onobugeishas changed this completely because the archers cannot outrun them, and you know eventually this will happen. Uh, you know, they will. They will fall down. Now, these guys cannot catch them, so this guy will get away. Anyway, more units coming for Louis, and it looks like he's pumping units. 14 units so far. 7 archers, 6 spearmen. Do we see a blacksmith yet? There is a blacksmith. It's coming. Plus 1 range attack. Meanwhile, Corvinus also going for a tower here. Protect the gold. I mean, some arrows lead in placements. Beautiful thing to have free, free stone. Coming for you as a Japanese. It's like, our obligations will be everywhere here. Can I just compliment how these guys just fight everywhere at the same time? Like, usually, people uh, have a lot of trouble with just attacking in two places at the same time. But these guys just attack, split, uh, everything is that. They, they are masters of this game. Meanwhile, Archer numbers coming up for Louis. He's actually gonna research siege engineering, probably thinking about getting down that gold. Now, Corbin is very heavy on gold. All these units cost a lot of gold, especially the, the samurai. Out of gauge is not really that much. Let's take a look at how much they cost. Only 20 gold. 20 gold, but the samurai, it's an uh, expensive mana arms. So 30 gold, so you need uh, to be careful. Looks like Louis will have some mana arms of his own. Looks like, hey, actually, my opponent not building. Horseman, so let's just throw some mana arms. There you go. They're already upgraded. They're ready to fight. Plus one melee armor coming for Louis. Plus one range armor already there for Carbino, so he's gonna be a little bit tankier this time. Meanwhile, the ramp is 
Going for the foot here. Looks like Samurai won't be enough. He needs more Samurais to tank the damage. And looks like Corbin is playing a little bit conservative. You know, maybe he thought Louis was just harassing just for the moment, but now we have 22 units against 8. And that's a... Uh, that's very bad. That's very bad. Maybe he was thinking about going Castle Age? Maybe he thought... Uh, it's like, no, you, you cannot fa fight in Feudal, right? Like, you cannot be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me here. But it is happening, guys. It is happening. Uh, Holy Roman Feudal Age battles arrive to the game. The wolf also wants to join the party. He didn't manage to kill the wolf. Oh my god. There you go. Finally. I don't feel good when you kill a wolf in the game. Am I the only guy who actually feels good when a wolf is dead in the game? Like, finally. Because it's gonna be annoying for the whole time. Especially in later stages of the game. Like when you're in Castle Age or Imperial Age. The last thing you want is a notification that it's a wolf. Like you have so many things to worry about. I know you have this wolf annoying you on top of everything. Looks like on a vacation we'll find the ram and manage to take it down. It's a big loss for for Louis. Looks like he stopped the unit production for now. He has 25 units on the field. Probably he's thinking about going Castle Age. We will see. He has plenty of gold in the bank. More units coming for Kovinos. And now the problem is that the production is at the front. And it's one of them is not inside a TC range. So it will get burned down very quickly. Let's see if Corbin has managed to build more production. There you go. Production in the back of the base. Meanwhile, town center being upgraded. Looks like we're gonna see the Katana Bannerman joining, joining soon. Beautiful shots here, guys. Looks like Corbinus went for a counter-attack. Onobogeshas managed to kill one villager. Two villagers went down here. Beautiful counter-attack coming from Corbinus. Just at a time where Louis didn't expect it. Thought he was on the defensive, but now he needs to deal with this. I have some archers to deal with that. I think a couple of archers should be more than enough next to the, next to a tower like this. It doesn't have the emplacement here, so gonna be a little bit exposed and at the same time Louis aging up with the Regnis Cathedral with 10 villagers it's gonna be grabbing those relics really fast <coughs> freaking cough man freaking cough every time I, I, I think like it's getting better it just doesn't leave for whatever reason I already bought some medicine and you know let's let's see how it goes let's see how it goes after taking the medicine for a while Anyway, now, Louis is wandering with his army. He doesn't want to fight yet. He knows he's going to get those upgrades soon. You don't want to lose your units before being upgraded. Ram is just going to be wandering here. You stay, you know, going for a walk. And I don't think Corvinus knows about the... He, do, he doesn't know about the Asia. And he's going to be in a little bit of a surprise. Now, he doesn't have enough units to cause some damage at the moment. It's not like Louis has been going to castle naked and us also you know uh, have no units so he does have units to to survive here and Corbin is trying to get as much damage as possible before he gets those upgrades better is coming soon look at this guys they, these guys are fast these guys are really fast meanwhile still gathering gold to get those upgrades meanwhile three relics are already on the field for Louis since when he had so many prelates <laughs> This is a beautiful thing to witness, guys. Holy Roman Empire fighting in the Feudal Age. Bololo attempt. It's a destruction. Veterans, before the archers will come soon, you're gonna be careful here not to lose many archers. You want to have critical mass to try to have one shot these, these mana times, which you cannot one shot with this 20, 20 archers, but 
you know. Now it's now it's much better. They do much more damage. Meanwhile, villagers running here. Onobogesha is trying to get some villagers. We'll get the priest here, so he won't be able to put the relic there. Archers will take down the man at arms. They finally clean this up. And the Onobogashas just keep running to see if they can find anything. There is on the back of the base. Very sneaky place to gather some food. Meanwhile, Relic very close to Regnix Cathedral. So, you can fairly say he has two Relics at home. Third one is coming soon. I'll just compliment how he sent those Prelates to get those Relics right away. As soon as he's, he aged up, he had three Prelates. Now, Corvinus did kill some villagers. He's, he killed six villagers, so that's that's good for him. So, but if the Holy Roman Empire already have like three relics, potentially four coming, and looks like this one is coming home for him. And there's nothing he can do about it. More barracks coming he, coming for Corvinus. Does he have better and samurais? These are already better and they will avenge their friends who were lost in the battle. Looks like the prelate went down. Now the archers are coming here. More archers, crossbows coming into the mix. Especially the, the crossbows, when you see a lot of barracks from your opponent, you gotta go you gotta go crossbows. Manatams coming as well. Well, Corvinus going for another raid. It's getting better and on Abogatia soon. As well as survival techniques. Like he's gathering deer somewhere in this map. Not exactly sure where. Uh, he he or he's gonna he's gonna gather soon. Wolf doing wolf things. If it's the wolf in my oh, enemy's territory, you don't kill it. It's a destruction. This wolf works for you, guys. Don't, don't kill the wolf. I mean, wolf farm transition going out for Louis. Just around the Akron Chapel. Classic move from the Color Roman. Just to get their economy buff with 40% gathering, gathering speed. I mean, while the archer is doing much less damage than before, but they do have some crossbows into the mix, so... Are doing quite quite a lot of damage. Now these are a lot of samurais. Now he's kiting. Has some crossbows here. You don't want to lose them. You want to lose their crossbows. It's like Arbinos went for a raid with those Onabogatias. His strategy is very simple. Samurai at the front line. Onabogatias for... You know. Trying to take some villagers down. And now he's pushing. Minify numbers. Fairly equal for both parties. I would say Corvinus had the advantage here because those Samurais are way more expensive. And he has the Bannerman. So the Bannerman will just buff all those units. And looks like Corvinus managed to get inside the base again. Looks like he's gonna lose his units again. More mad arms coming here. Let's take a look at Carvinus base. Town center being upgraded. Yoroshiro inside the forge. He's having the time of his life here. Now he can, he can potentially think about going for a second town center. He has the stone to do that. That's a cool thing about the Japanese is that if you don't finish your opponent, in later stages of the game, you may find that you have free stone to go for a second down center and go for an expansion here if you if you wish to expand faster. See, a lot of players do that, taking advantage of how much free stone you can get from mining gold. It's a battle of the century, guys. Holy Roman against Samurai. That's gonna take a while. Meanwhile, more units here trying to raid. It's like they're just gonna find some man-at-arms and some crossbows. 
Meanwhile, more crossbows, man. Coming up for Louis. Now, crossbow numbers starting to increase a lot. But Corvinus already lost his samurai mass. Now, on obligations don't do very well against crossbows either. But it's not the best unit you can have against them. The best will be the archers. And a couple of rams are coming here for Louis. He's gonna be sitting with four relics in the bank. He's having the time of his life here. Already having 1.7 foot per minute. Corvinus not getting behind. Now he's sending a couple of rams here. Just to ram the production. And with a lot of crossbows. So it's gonna be a tough one. Magonel gets Paul here. So Corvinus may have a chance to stop this. Despite not having the numbers advantage, he does have a mangonel. And gets a decent shot here. It's like that Onobogacious will go to the front line protecting the mangonel. He gets another shot. That shot wasn't the best. But Onobogacious keep blocking the entrance of those melee units. And they did a great job at protecting those mangonels. This, this choke point was beautiful uh, from Corvinus. And now Louis has to retreat. Only takes down a single barracks. A sprinkle coming up for Corvinus too, just in case his opponent went for another sprinkle. Gotta be careful not to lose the mangonel here. Villagers get called to repair the mangonel. Meanwhile, Louis just running around the base. And running here. He will find some villagers. Find to go for the deer and the boar. Secret side capturing the middle. More archers. Just following those villagers until the end of the world. Lankenet are gonna join the party. Three of them. Single crossbow just causing chaos pretty much everywhere. And now Louis denying food resources from his opponent. The deer and the boar next to it. It's a very, very important spot. You can see Corbin is struggling for food at the moment. Meanwhile, Louis aging up with the Palace of Swabia. Corbin is nowhere near aging up. I should take the wolf. Sacred Sight's gonna be capturing the north. And a couple of sprinkles are already there for Corridos, but there is no sprinkles from the opponent. Now it looks like Corbin is going for an attack. He doesn't have enough units, though, but he does have a couple of mangonels. Goes for, goes for the gold in the middle, and then he sees the Asia. Swavia is out. Meanwhile, Tide Barnes, first upgrade he gets. Meanwhile, 200 weapons already being researched. And Sacred Side Victory approaching. It's a lot of passive gold coming from Louis. Look at that. Zero villagers. And he managed to get all those upgrades. Pretty much for free. That's the power of Reckness Cathedral. And now he goes with a couple of mangonels. This is this will be the decisive battle, guys. This is decisive. Gotta protect those mangonels at all costs. Looks like one mangonel will go down. Didn't manage to protect it. Another Magonel will go down, and with that Magonel also, Corvinus taps out. Well played by these two players. I'll put a link in the description where you can follow Corvinus. Uh, Louis, uh, I don't know where he is, but hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next one.